let's talk about analyzing the graph of linear functions. And all that means is we worked a lot with how do you find the slope? How do you find the y-intercept? What's the equation? How do you graph it? But what does this look like in a real world context? And we actually use linear, line, linear graphs a lot in the real world. So we want to find out what do they mean? What do they have to do with real life? So uh, just to review real quick some of the key features, we're going to put x-intercept, zero, y-intercept, and the slope into these little boxes. Um, so this right here, this is talking about the slope of the line. This would be a positive slope, rather a little more shallow than steep. Uh, let's see, this right here is the x-intercept. This is where it crosses the x-axis. So that's our x-intercept also called the zero, but we're not really going to talk about why it's called the zero quite yet. Um, this one right here is the y-intercept. This is where it crosses the y-axis. This is also the y-intercept. This is also the x-intercept. And this one would also be the slope of this line, negative and rather steep. So that was just kind of a review. Let's go ahead and look at our first problem, our example problem. And what does this have? Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to describe what each key feature below represents. So we need to take a look at what does the slope mean? Not only what is the slope, but what does it mean? What is the y-intercept? What does it mean? What is the x-intercept? What does it mean? And we're gonna talk about domain and range really briefly. It's kind of a preview um, for further things. But let's take a look at what our example is. Well, it's always good to look at the title, driving a truck, okay? Then we're gonna take a look at our axis, our x-axis, time driven, and h is probably in hours. So this is how long I'm driving my truck and my y-axis is fuel in gallons. So this would be how much fuel I am burning up or how much fuel I have actually. Um, okay, so let's find the slope of this line. Uh, well, it's easy to find the slope. I just need to pick out two points. There's tons of easy points I'm gonna choose. I'm actually going to choose my x and y intercepts because they're gonna be super easy to, to, to work with. So I'm gonna choose the point zero, 200 and I'm gonna choose the point 20, zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and find my slope. Let's see, y2 minus y1, 200 minus zero is 200. And then x2 minus x1, zero minus 20 is negative 20. And when I go ahead and simplify, I get negative 10. So my slope is negative 10. Okay, fabulous. That means every time I go down 10, this would be 200 to 190. I'm going over 1, down 10 over 1. Or if I wanted to think of it, if I'm going down 20, I'm going over 2. Uh, but what does that mean is in terms of driving a truck? Well, let's see. My change in Ys is how much fuel I'm using. And my change in Xs is how much time I'm driving. Basically, that means I'm losing or I'm using 10 gallons of fuel for every hour that I drive. So I'm using 10 gallons of fuel for each hour that I drive, assuming I'm driving the truck, which I probably would not be doing. So every 10 or every hour that I drive, I have 10 less gallons of fuel in my tank because it gets burned up. All right, what about the y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses is at 200. So it would be zero, 200, or just 200. And again, what does this mean for driving a truck? Well, that means when uh, the hour is zero, when I haven't started my trip, I have 200 gallons. So at the beginning of my trip, before I start, I have 200 gallons in my truck. That's a lot of fuel. That's probably a really big truck. 
Let's talk about what the x-intercept is. Where does it cross the x-axis? It crosses at 20, 0. And what does that mean? Well, after 20 hours of driving, I have no fuel. That means I run out of fuel after driving 20 hours. I run out of fuel at 20 hours of driving. I can drive 20 hours without refueling, approximately. Let's talk about domain and range. Uh, this is a preview, but domain, domain is a fancy word for talking about all of our inputs or all of our x values. And range is a fancy term for talking about all of our outputs or all of our huh, y values. So for my domain, which I'm just gonna abbreviate D, what are all of the possible x values that I could get? Well, I could go from zero all the way to 20. So zero to 20. Um, now the more technical mathematical way of writing this is I would write my x value could, has to be greater than or equal to zero. It has to be equal to zero because I zero is included and it is less than or equal to 20 because 20 is included. So this would be the mathematical way of writing that domain. All of my possible x values. I bet you guys can figure out what the range would be. I'm gonna do the same thing only with my y values. So I'm gonna get all the way from zero and 200. So zero to 200 is included. The fancy mathematical way of writing it is going to be y values greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 200. So domain is your x's, range is your y's. And we're gonna go ahead and try the next two examples on your own.